Hi folks and welcome to the weekly blog. I'm here with my friends Jay and Jess. How are you yeah. lads? Hi. Good. Very well. What have you guys been up to? <laughs> oh, keeping busy one way or another. There's yeah. always something happening. Yeah, yes, busy. yeah. I had another quiet weekend with the rain. Yeah, it rained out again. As usual. Yeah. Oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. All right, so I guess, um, gosh, we've had a, another busy week. Jay, your macro class, that was exceptional this week. Yes. Yeah, we had that um, on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't a big crowd, but it was good to have a small group there. It was good to, um, they were all very keen to learn. Yeah. And uh, we, we uh, set up a few stations, did the old water drops on the glass. Which they all, it's always a favourite. They all found it <coughs> amazing. They all went, oh, I'm going to try this at home. It's so good. Um, because you can, yeah, you can be creative with the colours and shapes and things like that. You can, it's, you can explore that easily. Play as so, much as you like. Um, then we set up, what else, a couple of things. Oh, a model car, like I used to. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was playing around with model cars last week in the vlog. So yes. I set one of those up in a little light box and uh, just experimented with, you know, dropping the exposure compensation, getting the noise. Did they come out as well at the workshop as it did in your... Oh, pretty close, yeah, yeah. They? they were yeah. exceptional, they That's really were. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. no, that was really good. And then, um, what else we did? A few things. Uh, oh, it's just simple, uh, a bunch of old rivets. Yeah. Just poured them That's in a the pile and give them a side lift. Mm-hmm. And just teach, just learning about depth of field and, you know, focusing on... Yeah. certain things that you want to focus on and the light creating the shadows and then you got a special request also from one of the participants that wanted to photograph jewelry and that is hard to do isn't it yes yeah. oh no she was doing spiders and things so, oh was she uh pamela yeah she wanted to she was doing very interested in spiders and bugs and bees and things she had some great photos there um but the spider shot she was just uh spider spread out on a web state you know not moving around and she'd taken it from the top even just that you know, the depth of a spider on a web it's might a only be three or four millimetres. Yeah, the tips of its legs weren't focused yeah. uh, just because she couldn't get the depth of field. So I suggested that she could probably do that as focused stacking. Yeah. Um, so we went through a bit of an explanation of that. But what I've done is I've made a video up, which I'll put the link on oh, underneath. Good. So, yeah, that's great so yeah, how I go about focus stacking and you know, mm. there's lots that, of different ways you can do it. So. Something I'm... I'm familiar with myself actually the focus stacking is that the same as it's a blending process correct yeah, yeah. Oh, it's kind of what a, it's a more layer, layering setup um you, with macro your depth of field is very small of course. it can be down to one millimeter mm-hmm. five millimeters deep even at like f22 or something like that right. so depending on what you're photographing you'll never get the whole lot sharply in focus unless you take you know one one shot close to you and then another one that will keep Keep moving your focus deeper and deeper. I see. You put it in um, Photoshop where I use Helicon and just process the photos through there and it'll just um, pick the sharpest areas out of each of the shots mm. and blend them all together. Yeah, so it's one a shot. process. Yeah. Right. yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, it's time consuming. Um, yeah. The video that I've done there, you can, you'll, you'll see if you have a look, is 25 photographs. In Photoshop, that would take probably 20 minutes to process Doesn't one it? photograph, or mm, put sounds, those 25 into one. Sounds like uh, a bit like Star Trails or something like that. Well, yeah, same, yeah. same idea, yeah. yeah. Push the, the game button, process. go and have a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But I use um, Helicon Focus, which is a program designed specifically for focus taking, and it mm, does a okay. very, very good job and does the same job in probably... Two minutes yeah, in right. Photoshop. Sure, so, that's a significant well, yeah, that? because it's dedicated mm-hmm. for focus stacking and uh, it's very easy to use. So have a look at the video and uh, yeah, if you want to try some focus stacking, mm, it's definitely really good. check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah certainly. Um, because macro is always going to be a challenge, even if you're in the field. You got to have a, a, an external light source of either a ring flash or something like that. Um, but if you're yeah. static and you're indoors, so it stamps, coins, bugs, beetles, all of those things. It's a it's a great way to get around, not having to. And yeah, speed mm, yeah. lights and things like that. Yeah, all right, that's great. All right, good fun. Mm. Jess, how's your tracking for Snapper Rocks, mate? Are we yeah, still good. On We've, track? Uh, we were just looking at that before we started this. We currently have approximately 52 people saying they're attending, right? So that's exciting. Okay, it's terrific. 80 people interested. So, combining those numbers, it's looking really exciting for attendance rate and. Obviously, it's a beautiful area. I think we mentioned that last week in the vlog. Mm, it's Snapper Rocks. Um, it? You've got the, you know, the, the buildings of the Gold Coast uh, in the background, depending on where you're shooting. 
Um, and obviously it's a sunset, so the meetup starts at 3 p.m. in Snap Rock, so we're shooting into sunset, so it's a very beautiful area to be and mm. a beautiful time of day. So yeah, we'll yeah. see what the weather's doing, if it's like really cloudy <laughs> or if it's really clear, but I think either way, if we've got lots of people, it's going to be awesome. And even if it's raining, like, wow, the opportunities in the yeah, rain will be at the ocean choice, front are just matter. sensational. So yeah, I think sure. whatever happens, it's going to be a marvellous experience for everyone that comes along. So if right, you're not already... Sure part of that we'll drop the link below and uh, come along and hello really to fun. the boys at um, I was shot, I was shot. yeah so that's it's a um, co-hosted meet between my feature page Queensland folk I've got a couple of mates who are part of that with me hopefully you guys can make it for this one and yeah I was shot we'll be doing that with them so it's very exciting yeah, terrific yeah, yeah awesome. okay. well we'll be there definitely yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. wait it's going to be a lot of fun <laughs> well the most exciting thing I did this week for the first time exhibited my work at the USC Art Gallery Wonderful. and it was a it was a huge buzz it really was yeah. um, I guess you know I've, I've had a, f a few really cool buzzes lately uh, you know I did a, a commercial job for one of the local um, transit companies for an advertisement for the radio station and to be sitting in your car and have a bus pull up out the front and, yeah. and in front of you and there's your picture I could, it takes a while for it to sink in and you actually you know it dawns yeah. on you yeah. um, so that was a great experience and then of course topped uh, by the USC um, that is open till the 1st of July and it's definitely worth going along and having a look some very creative Where stuff there it's, it's in the university grounds itself just uh, outside okay. the eatery okay. mm, 10 okay. till 4 um, so that first image that we're looking at there, that's Cotton Tree, uh, that's one of the works that I exhibited. Uh, that's probably my favourite, personal favourite out of those. Uh, the other one there that you see with the, uh, the orange shoe, that's also Cotton Tree. That's from about 2013, from one of our beach walk afternoons, oh, I yes. think. I'm yeah. sure that's when it was from. Uh, and you'll see also another photograph from one of our workshops. That is uh, First Bay, Coolum, the Dave Shipton Sunrise Photography Workshop. And there Sweet. it is hanging in the USC <laughs> exhibition. Yeah. So that was worth going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So I've been having a play with those uh, Heidea filters since we didn't get the opportunity to go away uh, on Saturday. I was planning on some slow uh, exposures, some wispy water. and So uh, I had to change my ideas. We were sort of landlocked at home. So you, you, what I'm doing there, that's a four-stop neutral density filter, off-camera flash, and um, just sort of playing with what I can see as the light is already existing over there in the, the top right-hand corner, but yeah. manipulating the light with the use of an off-camera flash to give that puddle of light effect. Yeah, um, it creates that kind of um, the vignette feel. Mm, yeah, it does, darkness. doesn't it? Yeah, so it really draws your eye right back into it. Yeah. And I haven't really spent a lot of time crafting that. This is just me having a play. And then I've, I, I guess um, I took that same image just to see how else it could be processed. Uh, and I don't mind this, uh, this uh, vintage -y look. I'm going to try and print it and just see what it comes out like. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was my week anyway. Uh, I did have talks, and it's not official yet, but I've been talking with Steve Merrin. He's the National Sales Manager for Nikon Australia. Um, there's going to be a terrific event here on the Sunshine Coast. It's based around Nikon's full frame. They're, they're really pushing their full frame camera. Um, a lot of manufacturers have gone into smaller compact micro four thirds, but uh, Nikon are really just pushing forward with this full frame uh, system. You know? yeah, and and, yeah. and I, I'm 100% behind it. I, I still can't get used to not looking through that pentaprism and through that mirror. Uh, I just keep that little <laughs> television screen. It's still hard to... Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. Sony uses. <laughs> I'm sure you would get used to it. Uh, so that, that's going to be a great concept based around the great race. Uh, it's going to be a number of stations around the Sunshine Coast. Uh, Nikon will actually give you a camera, and when you get to a station, you have to choose correct lens, um, take a, a creative exposure of it, be back at the TED's retail showroom for judging and afternoon nibblies. Mm. And so we'll keep you updated in that. That's going to be somewhere in about mid-June. Um, but the, the All About Photography team are definitely proud to be part of that. So Jesse, uh, this Thursday, mate, you've got uh, 11 participants coming along to the social media. Yes. Great. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah, so by the time we've got the video up, uh, that'll be done. But yeah, we're really excited about that. And um, next week, we'll obviously go into a lot more details about all the all the fun and yeah, excitement yeah, we've, we've had from the <laughs> workshop. But yeah, yeah I'm definitely. really looking forward to that. And it's just uh, it's a real pleasure to be having the opportunity with you guys mm, to yeah. make that happen. I think, I think we're probably breaking new ground with 
you know, go doing a workshop on social media. You don't see sure. it around very much, and yeah. Uh, yeah. we're getting a bit of interest. It definitely and, uh, goes hand in hand for photographers and artists. So it does. Well, I think so. the interesting thing is what tends to happen is people are doing a lot of it within social media, mm -hmm. but you don't really see much of it outside mm -hmm. externally in this yeah. workshop sense. I mean, yeah, and sure. there are some you know top influencers that are out there. Kind of running their show and doing their workshops but mm -hmm. i think yeah. in this sense what we're doing is a bit unique yeah, I, yeah. I, I think so too i i have looked at a lot of those um, facebook advertisements that come through that are trying to get people to get your social media up but a lot of them are life coaches and um, business um, health yeah. foods and you know there are a lot of good stuff but i don't see a lot of artistic or, or people that are helping the the artists in the community how to get that work out to the right people exactly uh, you know and i think that's a big thing i want to stress which i know is kind of the all of our photography philosophy is the fact that we want to be interactive with everyone that we work with mm -hmm. and moving forward we are looking at making this a more regular occurrence so like i will do workshops on specific aspects of social media or focusing yeah, yeah. on a specific sure. platform so mm -hmm. that gives everyone you know if whether you're from the sunshine coast or not it gives you the opportunity to actually come along and engage in a variety of contexts and you know i'm really emphasizing asking questions so come along to the workshop mm -hmm. ask your questions mm -hmm. even below in the comments like ask questions get engaged with us because we want you to learn, we're going to learn new stuff as you're learning too. So That's it's, right. it's very yeah. interactive and yeah. community-based in yeah. that sense. And, and everyone's work is going to be unique as well, isn't it? Like exactly. there's probably going to be no one shoe that fits all. So yes. yeah, we we'll try and um, tailor it to everyone's needs. Anything else to wrap up with, lads? No, just a uh, bit of news on the drone front. Oh, yes. Um, last Friday, there was a... Uh, results of a Senate inquiry in the drone laws mm. and they've passed on some suggestions to CASA as to what they'd like changed and I guess it's up to CASA then to read these suggested changes and I might just quickly read through them here is um, one is the first one was re uh, recreational drone users will have to do a safety and training course before they can purchase a drone. So I guess like a safety induction course. So that I'm in favour. Yeah, I think that's I good. I don't think they're, that's an The rules are there thing. for a reason to yeah. keep people safe and sure. planes and everything else happening. So um, that's that's a good rule. If they can change that and enforce that, that's a good thing. The next one was uh, registration and tracking. they suggesting that CASA should be given the ability to track all drones. Um, Pretty much all it already happens with, I know, DJI and, mm -hmm. you know, those sort of drones anything that run that by GPS. G that's right, anything with um, a GPS system. All that data is logged anyway, and, and companies like DJI have access to that anyway. So, um, basically, they want to make CASA be available, that, that information to CASA. Mm. Um, and that's, they want to do it regardless of size and intended use. So, I'm guessing, I don't know how, like, those sport racing drones fit into that sort of thing, whether they... Mm. Uh, they're suggesting all all drones, but we'll it's, see what it's happens. It's going to be an that. interesting six to twelve months. Uh, you know how these Definitely. laws unfold, and they they changed so very quickly when they first came out, and then they had to re-regulate. Yeah, they know we can now they have, have to adjust to the yeah the consumer demand and that's the right. technology. The technology so I, I overtook the yeah that's right the the, the legislation and you know, there was nothing in place for anything like yeah, that. Was there? Yeah, yeah. A um, couple of other ones, uh, they want to set up geofencing technology around controlled airspaces. Okay. So I agree basically that you too. can't, if you're within five kilometres of an airport, mm. you won't be able to launch a drone. It'll just say, no, you're not allowed to fly here. Um, that's a great idea. I guess that's, um, it gets uh, gets rid of them silly people like those ones in China flying a drone over the airport. Absolutely. You know, it's a big no-no. It's dangerous yeah. for everyone involved. Absolutely, so, sure. so if they can do that, it would be good. And the other one was um, mandatory flight logging. So... And a display of registration marks on your drone. So I guess if it falls out of the sky, they can find out who owns it. Yeah, uh, be registered. I would say that they, they would have that in there anyway, because it would have like a unique, you know. Oh, there'd be probably ways to track mm. it, I guess. Um, but there are people there. There are a lot of people there that build their own drones. So well, that's right. That's going to be the um, hardest one for people to actually regulate because you can buy them in kit form now. And yeah, uh, I know a lot of the schools are actually building them as part of you know their science and technology. Yeah, and all of technology is so available now. Those yeah. they can do that. So I guess then if you if you've built one and fly it, you have to register it and put the display the numbers. Yeah. So that if they get um, you know crashed out of the wrong place or something that. I can be found who owns it and uh, mm. maybe uh, come down hard on them, I guess, if they're doing sure. the wrong thing. Sure, sure, But sure. anyway, they, these are just suggestions that the Senate inquiry has made to CASA to adjust their rules. 
Um, they've been given until the 6th of December to reply to that. Um, so I guess we'll hear then probably after that what rules they want to adjust, which ones they want to follow and that to try and make everybody happy. Mm, mm. Yeah. That's going well, to be, it'll be very interesting ahead. to watch. Okay, yeah. great. All right, folks, well, thanks for joining us. Um, lots of good stuff coming up in the next few weeks. We'll keep you updated. Um, as always, check for the links below in the video description. Um, don't forget, like our uh, Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube, and be part of our photographic community. Thanks a lot, folks. Bye.